everyone, my name is Yunfan, and this is the first lecture to introduction to Python. So, um, what I'm going to use for this lecture is Google Colab. It's a really cool platform that you can run Python code without actually downloading Python. And also it's for free, as long as you have a Google account, you can access Google Colab. And once you're done, you can either save it to your Google Drive or you can share it to GitHub. So it's pretty convenient, especially um, for some people who decided later that Python is not the thing that he wants to use. So you don't lose anything maybe because you haven't downloaded Python yet. But it's a really good start. It's similar to IPython platform, but you can have yeah, it has some like packages that you can use. So if you go here. Some people already write some example code that you can stop exploring. Anyway, so in this lecture, I'm going to first cover like how to print stuff, how to define variables, and maybe give you and yeah, and I'll give you an exercise later. So each of this horizontal bar here is called a cell, and if you hover around it, you can either you can see those two options. One is code, the other is text. So you can either add a text to it or you can add a code to it. So right now, let's just add a text to it. So you can do info to Python. So once you type it, um, you can see what the layout is on the right hand side. So you can make it bold or change the size. And you can see the right hand side will display what the result is. And once you're down, just click somewhere else, like double click, and it will show there as a text. And now, first thing first, let's first print out Hello World, because that's what people mostly do when they start a programming language. In Python, this is actually pretty easy, so what you will do is print and print quotes. Hello World. And then you run the code by clicking on this play bar at the left corner of the bar. So just click on it and it will run the code for you. Normally it shouldn't take this long. But yeah, normally it shouldn't take this long. Uh, maybe it's just my internet issue here. So yeah, so that's the first code I wrote in Python. Hello world. And then you can see this hello world is in quotes. So that means the hello world is a string. So in Python, you can use this pound symbol to comment on your code. I highly recommend that you comment on your code for your own benefit or when you pass your code to your colleagues, yeah, it will be easier for them to read too. Okay, now we have this code here. So we can just create a new code here. So let's do let's Define uh, different types of variables that we can define in Python. So let's actually add a text here so we know about the variables. Let's do more. So let's build it here. So, yeah, in Python, there are different kinds of variables you can define. So, here we're going to define so the first one. So you can define x as a variable name and you can assign the value to it. So in this case, x is 1 and 1 is an integer. And then you can also define y to be a float number. So it can be 1 and 0. So that's a float number. Or you can define the complex number. So so J here is the unit for complex number. And then you can also define a string. So name and one other oh yeah, sorry, I used two exists here. So I'll change it to a w and then you can also define a boolean number, a boolean type. So it'll be true or false. So, that will be. 
So yeah, let's actually create a lot of x. So print x. So it's a little lower case to here. So print x, print y, print c, and so if you So once you have all this, you just click on the round button, it will show you what the variables are. And then once you have the variables, we can use them to define functions. But before that, let's try some of the operations on those variables we define. So what we can do is that we can do So that would be 1 plus 1.0. And since y is a float, so it will automatically change the type of x to a float number. So the answer will be 2. And then we can also try z times z. So z is a complex number here. So it's the square root of negative one, and if z time, if you want to compute z times z, potentially it will just give us negative one, which is what we expected, right? And now, what we can do is that we can also this is why it's string, so we can also add a string to another string. So, for example, we can print out. This will give us my name is without oh, so us exactly my name. But I said error here. Oh, sorry, y is 1.0. So that's actually w here. My bad. So you can see, yeah, so when I put, when I added two strings together, so they just combine those two strings. So one thing to notice here, to mention here, is that if I use A, B, A, and B. So you, can, you can't really tell which one is an integer or which one is a string. And for integers and strings, you can't add them directly. So A plus B, you will see an error. Because here we have A as an integer. So you can still add those two things together if you and a and change the type of b to an integer. So if you an integer b, so you can see that will give you three. So that's what we expected. So a is an integer, b is an integer. Right now, if you convert it into an integer, and then the sum will be three. Or you can also change a into a string. So if you change a to a string and then add a b, so it will be the sum of two strings. And then the way string operator works is that you just combine those two strings together. So attach b at the end of, to the end of a. So if you do that, you will get one and two. So which seems like a 12, but it's basically just put one and two together. So yeah, so be aware of this operations later. In a course, when we do some complicated projects, and then before that, before we end this demo, let's actually try to use the variables to define functions. So, for example, we can define at numbers. So that's a function template. So you have a define at the very beginning, and then the function's name. So, which is add two numbers here, and then you can put two variables. So let's say x and y. So that's the two numbers, that's the two inputs. And then for a function, we should return a value. So for this function, since it's add two numbers, so we want to return x plus y. So that will be our function. And when you use a function, you can just call the function name. So add two numbers. And let's put one and two here. 
So if it works, it will give us three. Okay, so let's do. Okay, so it actually works. It says one plus two equals three. And then you can also bring the I function. Let's do multiply two numbers. You can also set a variable to be a good default value. So if your y is 2 here. So that means if you don't put in any y values for a function, it will automatically use y equals 2 for your function. So for example, if you can't multiply two numbers, let's use 3 and 5. So that will give us 15. However, if you ignore the second variables here, just put this three here. That will give us six. Modify two numbers. Oh wait, I spelled the function name wrong. So modify two numbers. Yeah. So that gives us six. So you can see the default value they pick for the second function is y equals 2 and 3 plus 2 equals 6. So yeah, we'll talk about more about this in later classes and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this so far. I'll see you next time.